In this step, what we'll do now is use another parameter in our material that we can use to change the scaling of the size of the grass. So if we want the grass to be a bit smaller or bigger, we can change that in a parameter like we did in the previous step with the roughness. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the material back open and we're opening the master material. We're not opening the instance, so let's get that open. There it is. And because we're dealing with the texture size, we, we're really talking about the UV coordinates. So we're going to need to create a new node to control that for us that we can then edit with a parameter. So what we're going to do is right click and I'm going to search for a landscape layer coords node, that one there. So we'll create that and it looks all multicolored and beautiful when it finishes loading in. There it is, so pretty. Now normally what you can do with this is just plug it straight into the UVs input on your textures like that. And at that stage you might be done with it and you could control the scaling of your textures here with your mapping scale. And we will be doing that in the next material we create moving forward. But for now I want to just show you another parameter. So I'm going to get rid of these connections here. So I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and just click on the wires and they'll just disappear. Bye wires. Okay. And what we're going to create now is a multiply node. So if you just right click and type multiply or most of the word, there we go, we've got multiply there, it's a mathematical expression. And what we're going to do is connect the output from the landscape coordinates into A, and then we're going to plug that straight into the UV's input on both of the textures. Now what we can do is plug something into B, and we can multiply that by the landscape coordinates, and we can use that to raise or lower the size of the textures. So that's what we'll do. And we're going to use the same node that we have done for the roughness, but this time we'll just create it from scratch. So we're going to create a scalar parameter. There it is. And this little bad boy is going to be plugged into B. There we go. So now that we have this scalar, we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this grass size or grass scale. Grass scale is better. There we go. And then we need to set the um, default, the minimum and the maximum values. So the default is going to be one because we want it to just be default as it already is. The minimum I'm going to set to 0 0.1. There's no point setting this to zero because if you multiply a number by zero, you get zero, which is not something we want. And the max you can set to anything, but I think anything above six in this case is going to be too much. So I'll set it to six and I'll be happy with that. Okay, now what we're going to do is pop this into a comment because we're pretty much done with it. So let's select those, press C, and I'm going to call this grass scale, like that. And then we're going to save the material that's ready to go. Save. Okay, so now that that's done, we can just pop this over to the side for a second. We'll pop it up there. And now we can go into our instance of that landscape material. So let's open that up. And of course, we don't want that to be taken up the whole screen, so we'll just pop it down there. And you can see now we have a grass scale parameter available to us. So for me, it's already turned on by default because I've already been messing about with this. Um, but for you, it should look like this originally, and then you'll turn it on, and now you can mess around with the grass scale. So what I like to do to work out what I'm doing with the grass scale is kind of look straight down, something like that. And try and imagine how big should the grass be if you're looking down at your own feet. What should it look like? And that for me... It's possibly a little bit too small, so let's try 0 0.8. That's quite nice. Do I want to make it bigger, smaller? Let's try 2. Oh, no, no, that's the wrong way around. 0 0.6. Let's try that. Yeah, I think I'm fairly happy with that. So now I can save that, and I can now easily change the scaling of the grass just by going into this material instance. So now we've got control of the roughness and control of the scale of the textures. Brilliant. So with that, we've sort of come to the end of this sort of practice with materials section. So this material now is basically done. So you can save it and just put it to one side. You can if you want either delete it or just leave it in your materials folder. I'm going to leave it there just because I feel a little bit emotionally attached to it now. Um, but what we'll do in the next step moving forward is we'll create a new material. And this is going to be the kind of more complex one that we can use to blend different textures together to create a more realistic looking landscape. So there's going to be like dirt textures in there. There's going to be grass. There's going to be two types of grass that we can blend between. There's going to be a rock texture as well that we can blend into the hills. So that's what we'll be doing moving forward in the next few steps, getting that landscape material ready to go 
before we then start importing some assets into this. So I look forward to seeing you in the next step for that. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.